What is your name, please? My name is James Goff. My name is James Goff. My name is James Goff. Only one of these men is the real James Goff. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Phyllis Newman, Henry Morgan, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome once again to, to Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Salem Cigarettes. Good evening, panel. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, you all look sensational. My goodness. <laughs> Phyllis, welcome again to the After Dark version, yes. <laughs> to tell the truth. Thank you. I like being here at night. And Henry, great to see you without your mask. How can you tell? I can tell, <laughs> boy. You gave one of the great performances. It was my pleasure ever to witness any time. Thank the you. The Polish spy and the entire panel voted for him when he was over here. So now we welcome you to this side of the show. Thank and see you. how well you do on that side. Very well, panel, you kindly open up your envelope, take out your first affidavit, and follow along with me. I, James Goff, am a sergeant in the Fife and Drum Corps of the Old Guard, which is more officially known as the first battle group of the 3rd Infantry of the United States Army. The Old Guard performs ceremonial, guard, and escort functions in and about Washington, D.C., and is referred to as the President's Own. While our Fife and Drum Corps was recently organized, its traditions, drills, music, and uniforms are authentic to the Revolutionary War period. We have on several occasions performed in the White House for the President and his official guests. Our appearance in the last inaugural parade marked the first such participation by an authentic Army Fife and Drum Corps in 160 years. Signed, James Goff. <laughs> And so, panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be James Goff, sergeant in the Old Guard. And we'll start the questioning with our own Old Guard, Tom Poston. Hey, hey there. <laughs> uh, thank you, bud. Uh, number three, uh, I noticed that you and number one were carrying something uh, black. And what is that, please? That's a flute, sir. Oh, 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 a flute. Uh, number, number one, what is, uh, what is somebody that plays a flute called? A uh, flutist. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let me see. Number two, who wrote Yankee Doodle? Uh, I don't believe I could tell you. Well, I'm going to get into a little area that I want. Number three, there were a lot of uniforms in, uh, in the Revolutionary War. How do you know which one is official? You no longer do know, because most of the records were lost in the fire in 1812 during the war. Number two, uh, how come you're in a red coat? If Paul Revere saw you, Daddy, uh, it'd be too bad. <laughs> well, as I understand it, the custom in those days were <clears throat> for the musicians to wear the facing colors of the regiment. Thank you. Phyllis. Thank you, bud. Number three, how many holes are there in a fife? <laughs> <laughs> I miscalled the instrument I'm holding. It is a fife, and there are seven holes in it, and the flute has 21 holes in it. I'm sorry I made that mistake. So, oh, thank you. Number two, could you tell me, uh, could you tell me when this was originally organized? Uh, what was originally organized? This Fife and Drum Corps, the date, uh, the, the year. The latter part of March in 1960, I believe, the 28th, I believe. Uh, and number one, could you tell me the dates of during the Revolutionary period when this original group was organized? I believe it was uh, around uh, 1774. Thank you. Number three, what other... Henry. Uh, number three, uh, you do so good there on the holes. I was wondering, <laughs> how long have you been a sergeant? I've been a sergeant for 12 years, sir. Why? Well, I... Because <laughs> I haven't been so always so good on the holes for one reason. <laughs> We laughed your time away, Henry, oh. and now we have to go along to Kitty. Number two, what do you call a man who plays a flute? I call him a flautist or a flutist, whichever you prefer. Uh, number one, where do you play when you play in the White House? 
Uh, usually out on the lawn or mall at, uh, by Pennsylvania Avenue. Number one, what do you call the thing you have around your neck? I mean, number two. Uh, which thing Haven't around my neck? Haven't you got a neck? drum around your neck? No. I have no drum around my neck. You, this, Somebody was playing a drum. It was up there. Huh? Oh, what do you call the drum you were playing? Snare drum. A snare drum. Number three, how many rolls in the... That's all the time we have. So you'll have to take your rolls and mark your ballads, if you will, please. Mark them at once, kindly. And of course, without change and without consultation, as you vote for number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will, of course, receive the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? Uh, right, Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I don't know why anybody would not vote for number three after that glorious <laughs> remark. <laughs> I voted for number two because it seemed to me that he was a little uh, hipper where the technical stuff was concerned. But uh, I don't know, they were all great. Fill it. How could I resist voting for number three? I ask you, and I didn't. I voted for number three. <laughs> Henry? Uh, I voted for number one because number three is obviously a musician. And a musician in the army wouldn't be playing any instrument. He'd be in the kitchen or something like that. <laughs> All right, Peter, what is your choice? I voted for number two because he said that a flute player is called a flautist, which I believe is true. And I believe number three is too smart to have been a sergeant for 12 years. <laughs> Fife and drum corps or no, so I voted for number two. All right, it's split high, wide, and handsome, and that's good. What two for two, one for three, and one for one. Let's find out right now which is which and who's telling the truth as we learn which of these gentlemen actually is a sergeant of the old guard. So will the real James Goff please stand up? You did well. That split it up good and made it fun for everybody concerned. Number one, uh, what is your real name? And tell us a little something about yourself, if you will. Uh, I come from West Acton, Massachusetts, and my name is Paul Revere. <laughs> They're asking, I will too. What, are you by any chance related to your uh, famous name? Great, answer? great, great grandson. Uh -huh. Oh, good for you. Really? And uh, what business are you in? I work for Revere Copper and Brad out of Boston. What did you know? <laughs> All right, number three, you've got a vote. Uh, may I have your name and what you do, please, sir? Well, I write advertising for the brokerage firm of Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Fenner, and Smith, and my name is John Adams. <laughs> Got to admit, we got you flooded tonight. You can't be any more historical than that. Now, let's find out how we did. You don't have to find out. I'm sure you know already. With two correct and two incorrect, it's the two incorrect you're most interested in. And at $250 each, that makes, of course, a nice little round sum of $500, gentlemen. Not bad for an evening's fun. And you gave us that. We hope we gave it to you, too. That is from Salem Cigarettes, as well as a carton of Salem's on your way out. Thank you so much for being with us. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> Incidentally, the uh, Fife and Drum Corps of the Old Guard will be performing the Prelude to Taps as part of the celebration of the National Cherry Blossom Festival in Washington, D.C., and the public is invited to attend. Next time you grow winter weary, try this gentle reminder of springtime. Very well, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. <laughs> What is your name, please? My name is Joyce Shelley. My name is Joyce Shelley. My name is Joyce Shelley. Will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit, panel? I, Joyce Shelley, am a champion cowgirl. I am an expert in barrel racing and goat tying. I earned my first trophy in rodeo competition at the age of eight. Since then, I have won over 60 different awards. Last year, I entered a competition with 18 other finalists from the United States and Canada, judged on appearance, personality, and horsemanship. 
I was crowned Miss Rodeo America for 1963. Signed, Joyce Shelley. <laughs> the panel, these three young ladies all claim to be Joyce Shelley, Miss Rodeo America, 1963. And let's start this cross-examination with our uh, visiting ranch hand from I've Got a Secret, Henry Morgan. Henry? Uh, number three, how do you pronounce R-O-D-E-O? Rodeo. Number two, do you say it that way? Yes. Might as well finish it out. Number one? That's right. Well, I was brought up to say Rodeo, but I haven't won anything for it, so I suppose I'm wrong. <laughs> Number two, how do you tie a goat? With a pig and string. Uh, but what do you actually do? Well, you come out of the chute on your horse, and then you dismount. Then you throw the goat and tie the four legs, back legs. Number three, uh, how do you throw the goat? You grab him by his legs, the front legs and, and the, hind, um, the legs farthest away from you, and pull him under like this. Mm -hmm. Kitty. Number one, were you in Calgary this summer during the stampede? No. Number two, were you? No. Number three, did, how, how do you barrel race? With wagons or on, on horses? Barrel race on horses. Barrel race on horses, not wagons? No. Do you go around the barrel? Yes. What is your best timing? Three minutes. Number two, what is your best timing? 18 seconds. Number one, what is your best timing on, on goat uh, tying? 16 seconds. Number two? About 12 seconds. Number three, does the goat smell? Yes. <laughs> Number two, do you hold your nose when you do it? No, ma'am. Do you stop breathing? No, ma'am. <laughs> Tom. Number one, what was Kitty talking about when she talked about that stampede in Calgary? It is a rodeo held in Canada. Uh, number one, what's your good time on barrel racing? Well, that would depend on the, the size of the arena. It's different then for each. Well, what would be good time for a barrel racing event? 18 seconds. Uh, number one, what would men's time for barrel racing be? Men do not barrel race. Number two, there are events that girls do that men don't do besides barrel racing. Do you know another one? Well, go time. Now, you said something before. Phyllis. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Number three, could you tell me the markings of a pinto pony? The markings, he's uh, brown and white. Uh-huh. Number one, the markings of a palomino. Usually blonde. Oh, excuse me. I was asking number one. It's all right. Okay. Number one, uh, what's the difference between an English and a Western saddle? An English saddle is flatter, a uh, Western saddle is heavier. Number three, do you agree with that? Yes, uh, there are other differences. Um, the Western saddle has a pommel, um, much wider. The English saddle is flat. Um, like Thank a... you. Number two, could you tell me a couple of the rodeo, rodeo towns that you've uh, played, or that you've entered in competition? Salinas, California, <clears throat> Houston, Texas. Uh-huh. Okay. Number three, when you... That's all we have time for. And whether you call it rodeo or rodeo, those who take part in it call it rodeo. So mark your ballots right now and without change and, of course, no consultation as you vote for number one, <coughs> number two, or number three. All ballots marked. Tom, what is your choice this time? I voted for number one. For some reason, in the middle, I changed my mind and I was going to vote for number two. Don't ask me why. I won't. Suddenly, as I was writing, I said, am I crazy? And yes. voted for number one. <laughs> Phyllis? Well, you see, I voted the same way that Tom did, but I voted for her because she seemed uncommunicative, you know, and I think she knows all the answers and was just giving them out very preciously. So I voted for number one. Huh? Henry. Uh... I voted for number three. It had something to do with the timing around the barrels. <laughs> I figure nobody's going to get around any barrels in 18 seconds. <laughs> and Kitty, what is your choice? I voted for number one. I thought her answers were awfully good. And, uh, and, yeah, and once in a while when she answered, she looked off into space as if she were visualizing those rodeos. So I voted for number one. So there we have it then. Three for one, almost unanimity, and one for three. Let's check right now as we stare our own moment of truth in the face, and it stares right back at us. So we learn which one of these three young ladies actually is Miss Rodeo America for 1963. Will the real Joyce Shelley please stand up? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> 
Smart. Incidentally, Joyce Shelley was crowned Miss Rodeo America in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Sahara Hotel as she will reign for the entire year. So well, congratulations <laughs> to you. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? I'm a secretary. Number two, I beg your pardon. I'm a secretary for American Airlines. My name is Nancy Forrest. Ah. <laughs> and number three, may we have the same information about you, your name and what you really do. My name is Betty Kalana and I own a health food store in Norfolk, Virginia and I've never seen a rodeo in my life. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to ask a question. Mm -hmm. There are people who say Rodeo. Who mm -hmm. are they, Joyce? Dummies. <laughs> <laughs> Most are, uh, mostly Easterners. It is correct. correct but either Spanish way. Right. But uh, out west and in the rodeos themselves, they call it Rodeo, don't That's they? That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So there we put that to rest now. Checking the score, we find there was only one incorrect boat, uh, and that's at $250, but I'm sure three ladies can always find what to do with $250. That is from Salem Cigarettes, as well as the carton of Salem's for each of you, and we thank you very much for brightening our evening. Goodbye, and God bless you. Now, everyone, let's relax for a minute and take a look at this delightful film and discover a new world of spring. Meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Patrick Hurley. My name is Patrick Hurley. My name is Patrick Hurley. Would you follow along with your copies of this affidavit, panel? I, Patrick Hurley, work for the New York City Transit Authority. The Transit Authority operates the 231 miles of subways, which carry over four and a half million passengers every working day. My particular job is to provide a service of which very few people are aware. I am the man to call if you should want to charter a subway train. We can make available to private parties a complete 10-car subway train for $150 or one single car for $15. Each car can accommodate 100 people. To commute to and from work in your own private subway car would cost $30 per day, but of course you could invite 99 friends to join you at no extra cost. Signed, Patrick Hurley. And so here we have a rather unique idea, panel. Three gentlemen all claiming to be Patrick Hurley, renter of subway cars. And we'll start this one with the uh, girl who stopped the show in the Broadway musical Subways Are For Sleeping. It sounds appropriate. <laughs> Phyllis Newman. Thank you, bud. Uh, number two, could you name the subway lines that there are in New York City? The various subway yes. systems? Well, you have the BMT, the IRT, the IND, Independent. Thank you. Number three, could you tell me where Van Cortland Park is? Van Cortland Park? Yes. 242nd Street and Broadway. Thank you. Number two, where is DeKalb Avenue? DeKalb Avenue is in Brooklyn. Number one, could you tell me what kind of people have chartered these subway cars from you? What does it do to the, the service? I mean, the schedule. Well, uh, which question are you asking? <laughs> <laughs> the first one. What kind of people have chartered it? Well, um, usually groups. For uh, what purpose? Model railroading, uh, groups of students. Last week we just had a... Uh... Henry. I'm Number one. Last week you just had a what? <laughs> well, last week I had a lot of things, but the one I was mentioning... <laughs> the one I was mentioning was we had a group of students from Archbishop Malloy travel to Madison Square Garden to a track meet, and we had a special car for them. Thank you. Number two, have you ever heard that story before? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because uh, I handled the chartering. Uh-huh. <laughs> Number three, do you, does the subway look for this business, charter work? Not necessarily, no. Is it Kitty? Well, what I'd like to know is why doesn't everybody charter one of these things for $30 a day if 99 people go to the same place to work? Number three, it isn't it cheaper than to go by themselves? Uh, why, don't they all, why don't all the people who work in one office charter one of these things? I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> Number two, is there any limit on how far you can go, say, for $15? Well, uh, no, between any two uh, points within the, uh, the direct route. You can't go around route. and pick people up, in other words. Oh, no. It, you have to, the whole group has to originate at one at the same point. Place. And uh, uh, number one, is there any limit on what time you can charter this? Can you have it after midnight? Can you have it before 8 in the morning? You can have it any time other than rush hour. I see. Num Tom. Thank you. Uh, number two, what does Red Arrow mean to you as a member of the New York Transit Authority? Red Arrow? I hate to admit this, but I don't know. Number, th number three, what is Red Arrow? What does it mean to you? It's an uh, indication of how to get to one of the shuttle trains. Well, there's, there's one, something else I'm looking for, really. Number one, does Red Arrow mean anything special to you I'm as a member? I'm not familiar of... with that point. Uh, uh, number two, well, how, how much does that come down to at, uh, at your charter rates for 100 passengers for each? Well, you can take a hundred passengers for one car, and the rate is still fifteen dollars an hour for one car charter. And that comes down to how much per per passenger. Well, if you use a hundred passengers at fifteen dollars, it uh, roughly comes to uh, fifteen cent tokens. Well, isn't that what the tokens are? Number three. <laughs> fifteen cents. Yes. That's all the time we have. So I charter them every day. Turnstiles and mark your ballots, if you will, please, panel. Mark them immediately without change. And, of course, no consultation permitted as you vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? Okay. Tom, I voted for home. number one. I voted for, I'm sorry, but I voted for number one. What the heck, he, gave, he answered all the questions anybody asked him, and I, I thought he was a lot of fun besides. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, as for a moment, did you vote? Well, he was so sassy that I had to vote for number one. He had that spirit of a subway man. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, what is your choice? Uh, my choice is number two. The reason is that number one is obviously the right man, but I've been wrong all night, so if I vote for him, he'll be the wrong man, so now I'm positive. <laughs> <laughs> and Kitty, your vote. Well, I voted for number two based on our Polish spy's question. When he asked number two if he had also done what number one did about the student charter, he looked as though he'd had quite a lot of difficulty, and he said, yes, I had the same problem. So I voted for number two. All right, two for one. logical reason. <laughs> <laughs> two for one and two for two, and away we go to the truth as we learn which one of these gentlemen actually is the one who rents subway cars or entire subway trains. Will the real Patrick Hurley please stand up? <laughs> even if he isn't Patrick Hurley. <laughs> he said his name was a real brogue. We should have known. Skunk the entire panel. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do, sir? My name is Tom O'Neill and I'm a United States Customs Inspector. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, you got the other half of the votes. What's your real name and what do you do? And my name is Tom Tolan. I own and operate a restaurant in New York City called J.J.'s Cellar. <laughs> There, you still didn't recognize him. Well, right? because it's a little dark in there, <laughs> and I had an enormous welcome. <laughs> well, here we go to the final denouement here, gentlemen. $1,000 for you to take along with you. A lot of subway rides that'll buy all of you. That is from Salem Cigarettes, of course, as is a carton of Salem's on your way out. And our thanks to you for being with us. Goodbye, and God bless you. Well, that's all we have time for. Kitty is going to take a two weeks vacation from us. Have a wonderful time, Kitty. Thank you very much. And Phyllis, we're making her a night people for the next couple of weeks to take your place. So we look forward to having Phyllis here with us. <laughs> and that's it. So good night, panel. Good night, good night bud. Good night. And good night to all of you. Don't forget to join us again at the same time next week. And I'll be with you tomorrow afternoon on our daytime version of the show. Until then, this is Bud Collier saying good night from Salem Cigarettes and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. When people need help, Red Cross is always there. Contribute generously to your Red Cross.
Miss Carlisle's gown by Gauthier. Tell the Truth has been brought to you by Salem, the cigarette that refreshes your taste. Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded.